Hello and welcome everyone into our Frontend House channel and today I come to you with a new topic that is user experience audit. So stay tuned and let's roll the intro. So, um, perhaps you have heard about something called user experience audit and uh, what is it exactly? So all the people think that user experience audit is basically when um, some kind of a designer goes through your web page and tells you what is wrong on that. So that's actually not what it is. It often is performed like that, but it's a mistake. It's not how it is supposed to be happening. So why do you actually need a UX audit. So perhaps maybe you are wondering why you don't get as many leads as you would like. Or maybe you wonder why people add certain things to the cart on your website, on your e-commerce website, but they do not make a purchase. Why is it happening? What is wrong? And uh, how can I fix that? So the answer to your question may be lying in uh, user experience audit that might tell you what's actually wrong because uh, okay, so uh, those answers you might find in uh, user experience audit. Why do you perform such an audit? Because thanks to user experience audit, we can uh, sort of give away to you like what kind of things people struggle with during the process on your website. That's why basically you should conduct an user experience audit because you are often very, very um, used to your website. You kind of know what is what, what is where, and that's why you are not like reliable person to identify those um, those errors, those pain, pain points. So you need someone who will conduct this uh, audit for you and people who will take part in this audit to underline what is actually, uh, what are the pain points in there. Us overall in user experience, when we find something that is findable, accessible and usable as to overall the experience that people have. So uh, this is something called cognitive workflow. So basically what user, out, user experience audit is, is a cognitive workflow. What does it actually mean? So cognitive workflow is a series of tasks that a certain user must perform that the, us that the uh, usual user would like to also perform while being on your web page to uh, complete a certain process. So a person that is conducting such a uh, cognitive walkthrough is responsible for collecting people that are not familiar with your website and gives them a list of tasks that they need to perform in order to complete a certain process that, for example, we don't think or you don't think that is working on your web page. And thanks to that, we might, uh, we might find the pain points here. So, for example, like we have here, like creating a task list. So we want to see uh, what is the process of buying something on your web page. So we create a task list that might start with, for example, click add to cart button, but it might start with open a web browser, navigate to your web page and then choose a product. I show you, I am showing you something that is in uh, in some kind of like another step, but it's basically the same. So we have a task list and we give those people a task list that they need to perform, need to uh, take action in. And one of them is click add to cart button, then navigate to your cart and then click make purchase button. And we are checking if whether or not those people have any problems with making this uh, happen, with uh, completing this task list. And if they have a problem with uh, at some point, we ask what is going on? Why are you, why did you stop? What is going what's happening uh do you have any problems maybe you expect something to be seen elsewhere and you cannot find it so those are the questions that we will be asking uh, those people it's basically like uh, user testing uh, when we want to test a certain process be before uh, going into development so this is like the same thing but we are doing it on your live product to determine where are those pay points at after uh, some people are already already using it so uh, creating this task list is actually essential and uh, first step Step in uh, conducting a cognitive walkthrough from uh, for your web page, and uh, then when you conduct this walkthrough, there are also four questions that you should ask. Uh, first of them is: uh, Will the will the user try and achieve the right outcome? 
So will he actually try to do it? And uh, the right outcome is actually what the user intends to do. So for example, if the user intends to make a purchase, will he actually re achieve this right outcome on your web page? Is it possible? Is it easy for him? Is it findable? Is it usable? All of those things, all of those factors are taken into consideration. That's why uh, this is one of those questions that we should ask ourselves and ask the user if they, if he actually uh, did that. Second of, of them is, uh, will the user notice that the correct action is available to them? So this is actually about the being, find, being of them findable. Is the user actually able to notice something and uh, and find them? It's important because uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people think that if we put something in here, it will work for sure, and then it turns out that it's not working, and uh, people need to find the people like expect it to be somewhere else. This is the part where we can identify some problems with uh, some objects, some uh, actions being available and findable to the user. Third question is, will the user associate the correct action with the outcome they expect to achieve? So this is one of the Nielsen Norman's uh, heuristics. The user, like the expected outcome of them, will it happen actually? If I press this, I expect, for example, when I press add to cart button, I expect this product being added to my cart. This is the right, the right out the, out the outcome that I expect. This is going to happen. If yes, then that's good because the user expected something and it actually happened. We don't want anything unexpected happen to the user. It's something that the user doesn't expect to happen for him. If not, then why? Why did it happen? Uh, why is the outcome not what the user expected? Is it the fault of maybe some kind of a copy? Maybe it's the it lies somewhere deeper that the uh, user uh, mistakenly understood something before that. Like for example, uh, earlier now we have for example finish and he expected something else to happen. Might be a lot of things. It's important also to uh, to check that if the if the outcome is what the expected what is expected by the user. And the last question is if the correct action is performed, will the user see that progress is being made towards the intended? outcome. So this is something similar. So the correct action was performed and was the correct uh, outcome. Is the user like thinking, for example, if um, like add to cart is part of a process, the end of a process is making a purchase. So if uh, do I see that adding something to a cart is uh, making me closer to my intended outcome, which is basically buying something. And uh, this is something that should we also keep in mind. For example, like you like mentioned uh, just a while ago, I'm adding something to a cart, the product. So this is actually a progress I'm making towards making a purchase. It's important even from this side, just to give you a little glimpse of an off topic. Um, we need to uh, like settle with things that are in real life and transfer them to a, a virtual life. So that's why we are adding something to cart and then making a purchase because this is often how it happens in a, in a shop, in a store. You take some products, you put them into your cart and then you go with this cart and make a purchase uh, under checkout. So that's that's why we do that. And that is uh, why I also, the adding to a cart is expected progress that is being made towards the intended income that is going to a checkout. Because this is what is happening actually in real life. That's why uh, we know that this is good for us. So using real life examples, real life inspiration, inspiration is, uh, is a great idea to, uh, to have your website uh, user friendly. So this was the, the last question that we should ask ourselves that if the correct action is performed, will the user see that progress being made towards their intended outcome? But who should conduct such an, a cognitive walkthrough? Well, basically, this should be a person that didn't have much to do with your website or your application because they do not know sometimes the, the certain outcome they expected, but they do not know it because they haven't been using it. Because then they are free of assumptions and uh, any kind of uh, personal feelings towards it and they are much more capable of having a, a wider view of your web page, of, uh, of how things should be performed. So. People, if you want someone to conduct it, it's better to use someone that is not associated with your web page or your or your application, basically. That's why you should choose uh, experts that know how to handle those things, and they can help you with conducting such a UX Audi cognitive walkthrough with them being completely free of any kind of tangles uh, routes to your to your website or application. If you choose those experts, then you can be sure that your cognitive walkthrough will be done in a perfect way, will be done good, 
and you will be able to then uh, identify the pain points that your user are experiencing on your website and well then basically you can correct them tell them okay this isn't working so how can we make this work and then this is another step that isn't actually in a ux audit so um, that's why you should hire experts that will help you with uh, user experience audits that they will help you with identifying pain points and other errors that user my users might encounter on your website and then they can give you a recommendation on how you can uh, correct that that is very important that's why you should be hiring experts that are uh, free of any like association like uh, anything to to your website or your your application then they can be completely unbiased and uh, with capable capable of being in uh, in controlling of uh, conducting a cognitive walkthrough and user experience audit so and uh, that was all for today that i have prepared for you remember that if something is not working on your web page or your application and people are having difficulties uh, completing something it's always a good idea to hire experts to perform a user, ex uh, user experience audit and check those pain points identify them and help you with uh, correcting them making your application your website or any other product that you have user friendly and uh, well simply helping you achieving your goals as well as your user goals and uh, for everything else regarding uh, software development you can find here on our channel we upload content every friday so uh, keep up looking for those and as for now thank you very much and have a nice day bye